Hey guys, Grant Taylor back here with another video for you guys today. Today I'm going to be doing my first ever ranking list. So we're going to be ranking all the FNAF games. So we're basically going to be going from the worst to best on it. So um, obviously we're going to start off with the worst and then make our way towards the best. So let's just get right into this because I want to make this less than 10 minutes long. So let's get right into it. So coming in at the worst spot, we have FNAF World. Now, FNAF World is definitely not the worst game in the fr franchise. Well, actually, no, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But it's not the worst game that Scott has ever made. So I guess you can give the game that. You can give it that kind of credit. But the FNAF World is definitely by far the worst FNAF game. Now, don't get me wrong. FNAF World was actually pretty cool when it came out, but it got boring within like three days. I got bored of it in three days. I just wasn't really amused by it when it came out. Like, even when I saw the trailer, I was like, okay, this, this looks interesting, but then when it came out, I was like, oh, it's just, it's crap. It's full crap. I, I, I get that, you know, Scott wanted to at least try to make a different spin on it. You know, try to do other stuff, like other type of games with FNAF, like do an RPG and maybe do like an action game. I mean, you kind of did that with Freddy in Space. So, yeah, I mean, it's not that bad. But, um, I think, like, the worst thing with, uh, FNAF, FNAF World is probably, um, it's probably the gameplay and the pacing of, like, really boring, you know, like, you just gotta walk around this area for a little bit and then eventually just be the first boss and then just make a way out and meditation with that new character. It's just, it's, it's boring. It's a boring gameplay and it's kinda, it gets old. And the voice acting move was actually telling for the first game. Voice acting for characters, which was, I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah. But anyways, moving on to the next game. Okay, so coming in at the next spot is FNAF AR. Now, FNAF AR, definitely not the worst game Scott has ever... Well, it's not even the game that Scott made, it's just the Lumix. The Lumix isn't that bad at... Uh, FNAF AR isn't too bad, if anything, I would actually say it's kind of good. But it definitely did not make it up high on this list because of the fact that the skins, some of those skins are just plain out useless. Like they have good designs, yeah, they have good designs, but do we really need them? But, and one thing I would say, but I really don't want to say this out it's really true, is that all they want is money. I don't think all they I mean, they kind of have to, the same business, they gotta make money somehow. I mean, they're a company, they got to. But, um, okay, but anyways, the only reason why they do this is because they want to make money. And I mean, yeah, they make money off of the merch stores, and the merch is pretty good, even though I don't really have any, but I know people who have it, and say like, oh yeah, it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad merch, but anyways, all in all, FNAF AR, probably around like a six and a half out of ten. It's there. It's good, but it's not that good, you know. It's okay. It's just an okay game. So we're gonna get into the next game. So coming in at the next spot is FNAF 4. FNAF 4 was an okay game. It was actually pretty good, not gonna lie. But it's it just didn't stand out to me. It just kind of felt meh. I think it was because of the fact that I was taking place in house. Back when it was about to release, I was actually speculating like before the trailer came out. I was speculating that it was going to take place in a museum. I thought it was going to be in a museum for the longest time. I think a few other people did too. And when I saw like the teaser poster, I'm like, are these monsters going to be like inside like a museum or something? And they're going to like, you're going to be like a security guard there. Gonna, like that would be cool. I want Scott to make a game like a museum that would take place around this time. And be like, here, like here's the Fat Bear Museum. We have a bunch of old props and stuff from the older locations that we found. Kind of like FNAF 3 almost, but not FNAF 3. <laughs> Have like um, um, old suits, like old project suits that William Afton was working on and it turns out they're possessed by other dead souls that he's killed at like frat bears or something like that. I think that would be a cool game. That probably would be better for FNAF 4. But no, it didn't be up the crappy haunted house sort of thing. It was just, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, it just, didn't work. I just didn't, it didn't stand out to me. I did like the mini game, so it did have like a, 
a lot of lore in it, but a lot of confusing lore, so it didn't really make any sense, but all in all, it wasn't that bad of a game. It wasn't that bad of a game, but anyways, we're gonna go into the next game. Okay, so coming in at the next spot is FNAF 6. Now, FNAF 6 is not bad. Again, it's actually a pretty decent game when it comes to lore. Did kind of have like a good wrap up for it. But again, it just didn't stand out. I just didn't think it was good enough to be like a really good, like a really good game basically. And it just wasn't that, it wasn't that great. It really wasn't. But I mean, FNAF, FNAF 6 is like not bad. It definitely has a lot of cool gameplay. I just wish that they had, um, like heavy continuous, continuously. I don't know how to say it. Like constantly play the game in the tycoon session section of the game and have the endless mode. I wish Scott did endless mode, but he said like, "Oh, I'm done with Netflix." But I think a lot of fans want him to go back in and put like an endless mode on there where you can keep doing the nights, but have them not be as hard and keep doing the simple. I wish that we had If we did, I think it would have been a perfect game. And actually, if that happened, it would probably be more higher up on the list. And if we got more like uh, stuff with like the rock stars and uh, the mediocre melodies and the other characters, like like the scraps and um, you know stuff like that, I think this I think it would have been better if we found out how they got there. Then yeah, it definitely would have been a better game, but. I mean, we kind of know how Scrap Trap gets there, but not the rest of them, so. Oh, well, man, I'm just going to wait and see. But, all right, well, on to the next game, I guess. Okay, so coming in at the next spot on the list is probably FNAF 3. I'm going, I'm just thinking as I go with this, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's my first ever ranking list, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But anyway, so next up we got is FNAF 3. So FNAF 3, isn't that bad? In fact, I actually kind of enjoy it, and I did like the mini games in that one. Um, it was really confusing. It was really dark. I, I like that one because it was actually a little bit more creepy to me. A lot of people are probably like, are all like, oh, it's not that scary, but like having like a dead murderer inside of a suit, a rabbit suit that's like been left to rot for over 30 years, and it's finally out, and he's looking for some looking for some good meat to head. Um, I'd probably be terrified and uh, and having like very limited stuff and have him constantly throw ob obstacles at you along with the phantoms that's a lot to work with and it definitely it gets your blood running it gets your adrenaline running but I like that I like that because I, I think it was one of the more creepier games a lot of people are like oh it's not scary but like spring trap just kind of like shifting towards you it's like it's not scary but like the fact that he's like close to your room gets your adrenaline running because you, you don't want to lose. It's kind of, kind of the thing with it. But it wasn't that bad. I don't think it was really that bad. So we're going to move on to the next next, uh, next game. So coming in at the next spot is FNAF VR Help Wanted. Now FNAF VR Help Wanted, I love this game. This game is really good. Um, back when I first saw Mark play and everyone else play it, seeing the reactions, I was dying. I thought it was great. I still want to get a VR headset to play it. I really do. I really want to play it. But now that it's coming out on mobile, I could actually have a chance to play it. But it's not going to be as good as VR. I want to play it in VR. That's what I really want to do. I really want to play it in VR. Especially do parts and service. Parts and service looks like it's probably the best part of the game, honestly. And I wish we could do like stuff with the toys. Kind of like what we did with Drive Bear almost. Uh, Drive Bear, that was kind of like a parts and service section. And um, I really want to do that again in the Curse of Drive Bear. DLC, man, I really wish I could have played that. One with the hall with the nightmares in the hallway. Yeah, that would have been fun. That would have been so fun to do. But, oh well, I mean, hopefully in the future I can get a PlayStation VR and get FNAF VR on it. But, uh, we're just gonna have to wait and see. We're just gonna have to wait and see. So, we're going to the next game. So, coming in in the third place spot, I think. I think this is the third place spot. I'm not exactly sure. But, Coming in at the third place spot is FNAF 2. Now FNAF 2 is definitely a great game. Definitely one of my favorites. In fact, I, it might even be higher up on the list, so I don't know. Maybe I'll even go back and put an editor's note in here saying like, yeah, FNAF 2 is going to be at the number one spot. So, who knows. 
Um, FNAF 2 is definitely one of my favorite games. Oh my god, I, I freaking love FNAF 2, and it has one of my favorite characters in it, which is Wither Bonnie. Wither Bonnie is one of my all-time favorite FNAF characters. Along, like, I love all the Withers. All the Withers are great. And I even love Toy Bonnie. I love Mangle, Puppet. I even love Bloomberg. Bloomberg is actually not even that bad. People are react with them. But that game has some of my all-time favorite FNAF characters in that game. And that's what just makes the game so good. And the location, you got a lot more stuff to work with here. Um, you know, you, you, have, you don't have doors. You just have these lights and you have a mask. And you got a flashlight. And, uh, yeah, good luck. That's pretty much, that's pretty much the game. But the lore is just so interesting. And the phone calls, I just love phone guys calls in this game. It's just, it's great. It's a great game. And I think Scott, and you know what's weird? This movie, this, not movie. This game came out, like, like, like a couple months after, and yeah, it actually outstood the first game. Well, I think it outstood the first game. I don't know. I might even. I don't know. But oh, we're gonna get into that in a second. So we're gonna move on to the next game, the second to last, the second to best FNAF game. So coming in at the second place spot, we got FNAF One, the first Five Nights at Freddy's game ever. Now, I absolutely love this game. I, I love this game. This game is amazing. And it was the first game I saw. It was I've been in the FNAF fandom since the beginning. I'm a veteran, but I am not speaking out. I, I haven't spoke out until just about a month ago on my FNAF world. Um, but to the public, basically. But um, I absolutely love FNAF 1. FNAF 1, back when I first played it, the first time I played it was in, in December of 2014. I got my mom to download it on her phone, and I got to play it. I was only nine at the time, so I would be playing the game. And I'd be like, "Oh man, this is so much fun!" I beat the first, first night on the first try. Not even hard because I look back at Mark's, Mark Parsh's strategies back when he beat 2020 mode, and it was just hilarious. It was fun. And then even my sister got to play it. She got jump scared too, which same thing happened to her back when she played FNAF 4. She played the first night. She got jump scared by Nightmare Cupcake, and I thought that was hilarious. But man, I had a lot of great times with them ever since the first game came out, and it still just stands out to me because it actually has my all-time favorite character in it, Foxy and Bonnie. Foxy and Bonnie are my all-time favorite characters, and they always will be. They always will be. But I think my Montgomery Bay and my team. I'm scared. I'm not like those people who think like all FNAFs are real. So I don't know. It's definitely not real. And I'm definitely not buying those fake stories from Chuck E. Cheese. Like, oh yeah, the, oh yeah, so I'll kill the Chuck E. Cheese. Like, I'm, I'm not buying it. I don't know, I'm not buying it. But, anyways, so yeah, FNAF 1, definitely one of the best games. Definitely, definitely one of the best games in the franchise. So, we're gonna move on to the best game, and I think you guys already know what it is. So, let's get right into it. Okay. Coming in at number one, number one, uh, and there's not even not even a drum roll because you already know what it is. It's FNAF Sister Location. I love FNAF Sister Location. I even have a shirt for FNAF Sister Location. Sadly, it doesn't fit me anymore, but I wish it did. God, I wish it did. But man, I love FNAF Sister Location. FNAF Sister, Lo Sister Location was a great game. It was definitely a great game. It had good, it had the easiest lore in it, which that's kind of good. I, I think that's good. And it, it had great gameplay. Funtime Freddy, I love Fun Funtime Freddy and Adder. They're my favorite sister location characters. In fact, my OC is based off of Funtime Freddy, so there you go. That's how you know I love Funtime Freddy. In fact, Funtime Freddy might actually be my favorite character, not gonna lie. And Kellen Goff, man, I love that guy. <laughs> he, he's just so good at playing Funtime Freddy. I, I hope he comes back in the security breach, and if he does, he can make it big, but the voice acting thing. I mean, he technically already has these, but playing a lot of good FNAF characters, so maybe. But Funtime Freddy, my all-time favorite FNAF character uh, of all time. And I love Circus Baby, I love the lore, I love the gameplay, I love the pacing, I love everything about this location, it's definitely underrated. And back when that game came out, that was right when FNAF was actually starting to die. Like completely, it was technically already dead by that point, because how, how it came out like over a year after FNAF 4. So, but yeah, FNAF, Sister Location was just a great game. It was perfect. 
absolutely perfect. And I'm, I don't even think Scott could have even done better. That's definitely a game he definitely did not need to go back and fix. Um, but for not, night four was definitely the hardest part. Night four was great. My phone when I played it for the first time on mobile. So yeah. Um, but yeah, FNAF 4, um, not FNAF 4, I don't know if saying that, but FNAF Sister Location, best game, 10 out of 10, so, yeah, um, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you guys did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button, and even hit the subscribe button while you're at it, I wanna get to a thousand gays so I can do a Frost Bear and Security pu Puppet giveaway, so yeah, so I will see you guys in the next video, pieces.